Hi everybody, it's Kate Richberg and I am live from my studio in South San Francisco. Um, I've got, hi Zoe, how are you? How's your Friday going? I'm gonna, um, I have you guys in my um, holder here for my iPad, so I'm going to, um, I'm gonna, tighten this up and move this around. So bear with me, this is live. You can kind of see my work space here. Let me get my chair. As people come on, let me take a little seat here. There we are, can you see me now okay? Good morning, or good morning here from the West Coast. Um, I'm live in my jewelry studio in South San Francisco, California. And I'm Kate Richberg, and it's great that you guys are hanging out with me today. Um, I've got a lot on tap, uh, but first, as always, um, if you're interested in following me or seeing where I'm teaching or seeing projects that I have out, um, you can go right to my website. It's katerichberg.com. And one of the exciting things about my website is um, I've just uploaded new classes for January through April of 2016 right here in my studio in South City. So if you are local or if you're planning on making a trip here to the San Francisco Bay Area, I'd love to have you in a class. Uh, and as always, if you have any questions, you can reach out to me at uh, kate at katerichberg.com. Hey, how are you? It's great to see everybody coming online. Um, I hope everybody's having a good start to your weekend. Um, so I like to start off these segments with some things that uh, I've gotten in the mail and things that I might think, uh, I think that you might guys uh, find kind of interesting. So let me jump in with, um, I don't know, hey Carrie, <laughs> oh my friend Carrie's on. Look, it's like a big old party here, you guys, we're all together. I just happen to be the one who's streaming video. You know, it would be cool someday if we could all have a big video chat all together, right? And so I'd be on your screen over there and somebody would be over here, I don't know, it would be like a big bead party. We'll see if someday that happens. It's cool. It is a party. It's a party. So um, let me show you guys. So let me just put up these luscious beads. You know, I don't know if you guys are like me, but beads were my gateway drug, right? I mean, you can see here, I love metal and I do a lot of work with metal. But my first love in the jewelry world were beads. Um, and so way back when, when I got my start um, a million years ago, I started, I see those hearts, that's awesome. Um, when I started this, I started my career at a place in Palo Alto, California called beadshop.com. And beadshop.com is actually still alive and well and on the internet. Uh, it was actually the bead shop uh, before I started. Um, and uh, now they're online as beadshop.com. And you know, the owner Janice Parsons, Janice taught me about beads um, and I really credit her for kind of what happened with my bead knowledge. Um, and so these beads here are from beadshop.com. I got an email from them on Cyber Monday or whatever shopping frenzy there was uh, right after Thanksgiving. And um, you can see here's their little, it's always backwards with Periscope, but it's beadshop.com right there. And I just wanna give a shout to say that Janice knows color like no one else I know. So if you're interested in beads, bead work, um, cool things with fiber and beads, jump on over to beadshop.com and also check out their blog. There's a lot of cool tutorials and stuff like that. Janice has no idea I'm saying this, but I just wanted to go over there. Um, that's right, Zoe, shout out to TVS, the old bead shop. Um, my cousin Zoe, who's also watching today, she worked there with me for a while and she actually started, helped Janice start the World Wide Web of bead shopping on beadshop.com. So it's something that's near and dear to my heart. So I got these really cool, um, what are called Padre beads right here. And let me show them up real close, right? They kind of look like a size, maybe eight or six kind of seed bead, but these are from Africa and I love them so, so very much. So um, I have a project all earmarked for these. It's gonna be a stringing project that I'll share with you guys probably after the new year. Um, but right, green beads, aren't they, aren't they super pretty? Um, green beads just kind of kill me. They're so beautiful. So anyway, so that's what I've got, these fantastic, beautiful green beads from Bead Shop. Um, so shout out to them. 
Also, you guys may know I'm doing a lot of stamping in my work, metal stamping, and I just got this cool stamp. Uh, it's a handmade stamp from someone who I know online. Um, not a, oh, are you? I, I know, green beads, right? Krista, I'm telling you, they're like, they're like a drug to me. Um, this is from online, it's also backwards there, but it's Sudlow Jewelry, Rachel Sudlow, um, on Etsy.com. Let me turn this around. I'm gonna turn the camera around real quick. There we go, can you see? And so it's right side up. There we go, look at that. So you can kind of see that she's on Etsy. And let me turn this around so you can see. Here we go, back towards me. Um, the stamp is a cool flower stamp um, made out of tool steel, um, really beautiful. Um, I just ordered this from her a couple of weeks ago and got it in. Um, and I'm gonna use that. I've been doing a lot of designing with kind of a, I don't know, kind of a Mexican influence, a Frida Kahlo kind of influence. I've always kind of dug her jewelry and about how she just wore so much jewelry and it was super beautiful. So um, my latest jewelry collection that I'm making kind of has that Frida-esque kind of feel to it. So this is a stamp that I think is gonna go pretty well with some of my new stuff. And let me get that a little closer so you guys can see what's, what's shaken with that. Um, this, let me turn it to the side. That's just a blank that uh, I cut out with my Potter uh, hydraulic press with one of his dies there. And then I just have little, um, little solderable accents and some stamping and stuff on there. And the wires on the side, I did some twisting. Um, and that's something that I think is kind of cool that um, if you're at all interested in doing, it's pretty easy. This is the wire that I've twisted, um, and I'll get it up there right to the camera so you can see that. Can you see that okay? It's not really in super focus, but um, you can kind of see it there. And um, so this square wire I've twisted, and it makes that nice little twist. So this is what it looks like pre-twist. Just square wire, and it's a pretty thin gauge, maybe like 16 gauge maybe, or 18 gauge even. And then I just put it in a vise, my vise grip. And then I put the other end in this pin vise here. And then I just twist it. And it's so thin that it twists out really, really well. And then I just use those to make adornments here on this piece. Now I also, uh, thank you for the love, I love seeing those hearts. Um, you can see here, right in the center, I wanna talk a little bit today also about some cabochons, cabochon setting, and then we're gonna do some, um, some drilling also. That piece, those of you who have been watching um, the past few weeks, I've been working with this piece that I did on my jewel tool, and you can see the jewel tool right there. Um, Dragonfly, yeah, I can use a power drill to twist. Um, the thing about this wire, since it's so thin, you want to use a power drill on a really low setting and keep the tension in there as you are um, working that drill. So if you put this end in a vice grip and this end in your power drill, just like a chuck, right? and then turn that drill on really slow, but keep that tension, keep the wire taut, then you'll have a nice even, even twist. If you over twist, the wire's gonna break, but if you're just playing around with copper wire, you can't hurt yourself and there's not, you know, if you wreck it, who cares? You'll just do another one. Um, but it's pretty, pretty simple. And again, it just makes really cool accents. I love this twisted wire. Um, but getting back to what we're gonna be doing in just a minute, yep, no problem. Um, we're going to talk about some stone setting, some cabochons. I want to show you this little guy here. Then we're going to go over to this area right over here where my flex shaft is, and I'm going to drill that stone. And then I'm going to show you a tip. I've got some cool stones that are tiny that I'm going to measure for a bezel, so I want to share that with you too. So let's take a look. I keep looking over here because I feel like the camera is over here. The camera is really over here. So if I keep looking over there, just bear with me here. But um, anyway, uh, K. 
cabochons. That's where I was. Okay, so let me show you here. I'm going to stand up and kind of move things around and show you um, about these little bezels first. See right here on this piece, this little cup here, that's a pre-made bezel cup. And I don't know if you guys have used pre-made bezel cups before, but I really, really dig them. Let me show you something that's in another finished piece that I've got over here on my mood board. Um, let me grab it. And you can see these are some smaller bezel cups over here also. Take a look at these guys right here. Can you see that? These are little stud earrings you can see there. But these little cups here, I also use these. This is a project that I did for Interweave a while back that was on a video. Um, but I love setting tiny little stones. Hey, Lee, there's my friend Lee. How are you doing? Um, I love setting these tiny little stones and um, making tiny bezels for those tiny stones. Sometimes I don't want to do a tube bezel. So a tiny bezel cup is a great way to go. So let me show you what those look like. And I found them from Rio Grande um, online. And you can see, I keep them in these little boxes. This box I found here, look at that, right? Are you like me and you love storage? I love storage. Um, right, yeah, I see all those hearts, I love storage. Um, I found this at Harbor Freight for like practically free. Um, and it's a really cool way to keep all of these little parts organized. So let me show you right here, I label them. So this is a four millimeter copper bezel cup. And let me take it out so you can see what it looks like. And so I, sh I um, set, let me hold this with my soldering tweezers so you can see it. There we go. So you can see it's a little serrated cup. They're not super <laughs> thermal printer for the wind. That's right, Zoe Pie. I also do all of my little labels with my Dymo labeler. And as I've heard said before, the Dymo labeler is a game changer. It really is. It's helped me become so organized. Um, but here's that bezel cup. And you can see it, the walls aren't super tall. Um, and you can buy calibrated stones, like this is a four millimeter bezel cup. So I'd just buy a four millimeter round cabochon to fit in it. Um, super easy to use um, and really kind of, um, really kind of a great shortcut. So I have them in copper and then I also have them in silver. Can you see that there? They're rattling around in there. And so I just use them. I'll pull this guy up one more time. I just use them to solder right into place and I'm going to set a little stone uh, in there later, a little four millimeter cabochon um, right there. And th this is going to be an earring, so there'll be an ear wire up here and then maybe some dangles and stuff down here as well. So this is something that's kind of in progress. But bezel cups, you guys, let me tell you, um, it's a great time saver for sure. So I'm going to walk you guys over to that other... Um, that other, can I point at it right over there? That other um, vice grip and set you guys up over there. And let's go on with some more, um, some more demos and stuff that we've got going on this morning. So here we are. I'm gonna move you guys around. Put you in the vise, in the vise, here we go. I think you can see me okay over here. There we are, hello. Um, so one of the other things that I've got going on here, I'm going to move the jewel tool back a little bit and let me see if I can move you guys, tilt you so you can see what's shaking over here. There we go. Tighten this up. I'm telling you, a table vise is good for so many things. Not only is it good for holding your metal, but it's great for holding your iPad when you are filming in your studio. I know I love that jewel tool. I think you've worked on this very jewel tool here in this, in my studio. Why is this kind of loose? Well, you're kind of rolling around there, but hopefully you guys will be able to see. I'm going to move the jewel tool back a little bit so we've got some space. Um, let me show you that, since we're kind of on cabochons, let me show you that cabochon trick for sizing real quick and then we'll get on to to drilling um but if i have 
some bezel wire. Let me grab some over here. Here we go. I'm back. Here's some bezel wire. This is just plain serrated brass bezel wire. Um, and I carry this in my Etsy store. I use this brass bezel wire all the time. So it's similar. You can see right there. That's good, I think. Um, it's similar to those serrated bezel cups, but if you have a stone that's kind of an odd shape or something like that, the bezel cups usually just come in round and oval. So this is good for smaller stones that have shape. And I just got in the mail, it was really nice, from a student of mine who cuts opal. It's kind of fun to have friends that work with rocks, right? And they came in this lovely little box. Look at that, and there they are wrapping around. I know, aren't they pretty? I love opal. So I have one here that I think I'm gonna work with. Let me get this tweezer so you can kind of see it maybe. Hopefully it won't go flying all over the room. It may, you never know. But there's that stone and you can see it's pretty small. So it would be kind of hard, it's kind of hard when you're fiddling with this bezel wire, right? To kind of wrap it around and get the size exactly right. So this is a tip that I teach my students in my bezel setting class. Um, I've got some tape here and Sometimes I just use regular masking tape that I have, like blue painter's tape. But this is something. Okay, check out the R set. Oh, okay, thanks, Laura. We'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Um, so this tape is something I got in my goodie bag at Bead and Button last year. And this is actually from Urban Beater. And they actually use this to help stamp straight, because Urban Beater is a stamp supply company. Um, so it helps you line up your stuff for stamping, but I think this also is great to use to help measure your cabochon, uh, your bezel wire. So let me show you how I do that. I'm going to cut this with my scissors, and some of you guys may already know this trick, but bear with me here. What I like about it is that it has this grid on it, right, so I can um, cut my tape super straight. So I'm going to use my sharp little scissors here. To cut my tape so it's about the same size as my bezel. I'm just going to clip that along and I'm going to clip along that line. Can you see there? Okay. There we go. And then I have this whatever it kind of you know mimics a bezel, right? It feels like a bezel, a little strip. Then I get my stone, whatever it is I'm going to bezel around, and they're pretty slippery. <laughs> Why didn't I use a larger stone live on air? Then I'm going to wrap it around. Can you see how I've stuck it? And why did I have so much coffee? No, I'm okay. I'm okay. You're okay. There we go. And it's around. So see, you can see, and I'll hold it up so you guys can see that. Let me make it stop moving. So see that little tape is all the way around the stone, right, with this bezel, just like a bezel. Then I'm going to take a marker, a fine tip permanent marker, and mark where it overlaps. But, you know, I can just see with how cool this tape is, I can actually just see which line to use so I hardly even have to mark it okay so and to see how that let me straighten it out that's so not straight but you can see where I'm going with this see how those little lines match up and so when I take my little tape off this is now my pattern or my length and I'll lay it right along my um, my bezel wire, can we see that there? And now I'll just cut this bezel wire with my uh, shears. I can use my wire cutters here to give myself a nice clean cut. And if the soldering gods are smiling down on me, I'll be able to take off this tape, solder this bezel closed just like so, bring it, bring it closed with my fingers or with my pliers, but you can see uh, solder it closed and then hopefully when I put my stone inside um, it'll be the exact right size. So I will take this a little further next week. I'll solder this closed and see if we can get that to fit. But uh, it's a pretty good tip I think to um, to work with. So remember it's this little tape 
right here, wrapped around your stone, and then use that little piece of tape on your bezel wire to, to measure it. So I've got that. So, oh, I'm glad you guys liked it. It was fun. That was, it's a cool tip to do, I think. Now, last but not least, those of you who have been watching, as I said, a few weeks, for a few weeks now, we've taken this stone. It does work every time. Good. I'm glad to know that. Um, right, Cindy? I love this tape. There's my friend Cindy all the way from Canada. Look, we're hanging out today. You're way up north and I'm way down south. This is, oh, the wonders of the internet. I love it. Um, so this stone, uh, I cut on my jeweler's uh, saw, my ring saw. I'm going to flip. Oh, you're in Canada too. Hey, Canada. Awesome. I'm going to flip around and you guys can see, see right over there. That's my ring saw um, right over there. Hey, Sonia, don't worry. If you missed stuff, this is going to be on YouTube uh, later this afternoon so you can watch the whole thing. No worries there. Um, but I cut this on my ring saw, let me found, and then I polished on my jewel tool, your friend and mine, the jewel tool. And now, let's say that I wanted to maybe set this on a ring or rivet this onto something. Now I'm going to drill it, okay? So, and drilling stones is easier than you might think, right? I think people start to get a little worried, like, oh my gosh, I'm drilling through a stone. What am I going to do? It's kind of scary. But it's not. It's all in having the right bits to drill. And let me share these with you. We have, I have here a diamond drill bit. I'm going to get it really close to the camera so you can see that. This is a little diamond drill bit. Again, something I carry in my Etsy store. Um, but if you have some diamond drill bits at home, you can try them with that. Um, and this one is about, I don't know, 1.5 millimeter-ish about. Um, hey, UK. Um, and then this is a little um, burr that's going to smooth the hole. So I'm going to do both of those things. So let's take this guy. And you can use this, you guys, in your flex shaft, which I have here. Or if you have a Dremel, um, you can also use it in your Dremel. Any handheld rotary tool will work. I also have right behind me, right here, this guy. This is a drill press. And you could also put it right in your drill press as well. Um, before I do this, let me mention, I have a free class on this on beeducation.com. Actually, I filmed a free class for them a few months ago, and it's up online. So you can go hop right over to beeducation.com and watch this in a little bit further detail. But um, let me show you here. Here's your friend and mine, the flex shaft. Um, I use this tool for doing so much stuff, uh, polishing and all that good stuff. So let's put this, this drill bit in here this diamond bit and let's tighten it up and you want to make sure I just pull with my fingers just to make sure it's nice and tight now I'm going to stand up so you guys can kind of so I can work it, you guys can see and I'm going to move let me move this over I think you guys will be able to see here okay and then um, then I'll hold it up to the camera so you guys can see what's happening so I want to make sure that my drill press or that my rotary tool is working and it is it's drilling and I need a drilling surface. And one of the surfaces I use here, this is, you may recognize, an ordinary wooden dapping block. Um, and I also carry these guys. You know, I don't use the dapping, the wooden dapping block for shaping my metal much. I do use it, however, as a um, drilling surface. Because remember, as you're drilling stones like this with a diamond drill bit, things need to be wet. So my little wooden block here is a great little reservoir for my water. Small, if my drill goes down into the wood, it's not gonna damage that drill. Um, so I think it's a great, um, a great little tool for that. So if you have a wooden dapping block and you don't use it that much, you can repurpose it for drilling. Um, once you drill with it, it starts to get kind of thrashed. So it's not real great for going back to dapping with. Um, so I'm going to kind of dip my little, my bit here in the water, and I'm going to dip my stone in the water here. We can see that it's all ready to go. Now when I start to drill, I'm going to come in at an angle, and then I'm going to move my flex shaft straight up and down. And if I come in at an angle, 
that little edge is going to catch the stone so my uh, flex shaft won't skitter all over the top. All right, so let's see what happens. Bear with me here. I'm going to turn on the flex shaft with the foot pedal. I'm going to get right in there. And I can feel that my bit has started to grab. So now I'm going to move my flex shaft straight up and down and drill through. Now I want to make sure that this stone stays wet. So I'm going to frequently dip and drill. quick here what we've got going on might be a little hard for you to see but can you see how I've got the beginnings of a hole here that I've started to drill now this is poppy jasper poppy jasper actually is a local stone um, just this is found just south of us in Morgan Hill California actually um, and it's a pretty hard stone so of course when I'm drilling live on the air I'm drilling the hardest stone ever. But let me drill a little bit more here and then we'll see the progress. You want to give it a little bit of push here on the flat shaft itself, but you don't want to push so much that you're forcing the tool through the stone, okay? Frequently dip to keep that bit to keep that bit wet. And I'm making some progress. So let's take a look what we've got got going. You see there, that hole is getting a lot bigger. So I'm about halfway through. Make sure to keep that stone lubricated. And right before I feel like I'm going to break through the stone, I want to slow the flex shaft down a little bit so I don't damage the other side of the stone as I'm drilling. Maybe in little bursts here. Let's see. And I can kind of also see how far I'm in by, I can kind of look here and see, all right, that's where my flex shaft goes. So I'm pretty close. Let me show you what it looks like before we break through. We're getting close here. And that's the thing, you guys, with drilling stones. Drilling stones does take some patience, so you just have to hang in there and bear with it. We're super close now.
success. Look at that. Pretty cool, huh? And the back, since I was going kind of slow, let me show you the back here. Not chipped. Looks pretty good. <sighs> let me blow the water out of there. There we go. And then the front. Now, this is a perfect size hole for about, I don't know, maybe a 16 gauge wire rivet or so, about like that. Um, and you can see, if I kind of turn it a little bit, how the edge of the stone is a nice angle. If you did want to soften that angle a little bit, let's say that you're, um, where's the bit I'm looking for? Let's say that you wanted to wire wrap this or have the stone, here it is, have the hole exposed a little. You could use this diamond bit, this rounded bit in your flex shaft or your rotary tool and just rotate it a little bit here and that'll help slope your hole a little bit to make it a little less harsh. But since I'm going to be riveting, I want this hole to be nice and at a nice angle here. So I'm not going to do that with this. But this little eggshell tip um, is a great way to just soften that hole a little bit. And you could do it on both sides if you wanted to have that um, to have that show. So that's what we've done today, you guys. Let's see. We have uh, we talked a little bit about beadshop.com and my friend Rachel Sedlow who do who does those great stamps and bead shop doing those great beads. Um, I talked to you a little bit about serrated bezels, how those work. Um, we did, we used some of this cool tape from Urban Beater um, to help measure for our bezel here for that stone. And uh, next week I'll go ahead and solder this bezel closed. I'll show you how I do that. And we've also drilled a hole right here in our piece of Poppy Jasper. Um, next week, I'll also rivet this piece so you can see how I might rivet uh, a stone through this wire. So that's what I've got today. Hope you guys have a fantastic weekend. Thank you so much for joining me. Um, if you're local to the San Francisco Bay Area, um, again, jump on my website katerichberg.com. You can see I've got new classes there for you to sign up for right here in my studio. And you can also see I'm having a big studio event on Sunday where me and some of my jewelry artist friends are showing jewelry, as well as we're having a free make and take with indigo dyeing. It's going to be fun. Um, and you'll be able to sign up for classes there as well. It's going to be raining here in South San Francisco. So, um, but it's okay. We've got a lot of coverage. We're going to have food and drinks. Um, thanks, Cindy. Great. Great. I hope to see you when you come in, into San Fran, um, you guys. Uh, so yeah, if you're around, stop by. Info is on the website. And again, thanks so much for watching, you guys. I love being able to see my buddies um, all across the world through this medium of the internet and filming. So thanks so much. Be safe, be well, and I'll see you next time.